Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another Historical Humans Reacts and on today's episode we're going to be talking about Spain and Spanish anti-tourism protesters take aim at Barcelona visitors with water guns. They're upset that there are so many visitors to Barcelona that it's causing a housing shortage. So they're taken to the streets with water guns shooting at tourists. Yeah. Yep, shots have rung out in the city. Um, uh, whether or not this, whether or not these will be the first or last shots fired is anyone's guess. <laughs> really smashed uh, in the city there. Yeah, but yeah, basically what's happened is um, in Barcelona and in other parts of Spain, and I think also a lot of other tourist places, um, the ability to rent out actual properties uh, on things like Airbnb and with other licensings and permits has created sort of a bubble around tourist uh, attractions and tourist heavy areas in which uh, people are getting gentrified out of their own, you know, cities and hometowns. This is happening all across the world, too, in a lot of major cities where a lot of times people are buying these quote-unquote investment properties and listing them on an Airbnb, renting them out instead of renting them out to a long-term uh, tenant because in the long term, you can potentially make more money on Airbnb if you get three, $400 a night versus, you know, two grand a month. Yeah. The math maths out, and it, it creates a situation where you effectively are buying out and pricing out all of these inhabitants, all these people in favor of tourism and short term housing. And it's creating this bubble where people can no longer afford to live in the city or even near it because it just, it trickles outward. Yeah. And I, quite frankly, I, I hate seeing this because the housing is already in such short demand and platforms like Airbnb and such like that, it just takes advantage of people, and at this point, like it used to be good to get a, a a place on Airbnb just to have extra space or kitchen, but now you pay three times as much and all the stupid cleaning fees, and they want you to do half the work them yourself. Yeah, but even even aside from the issue with Airbnb, the issue for the residents in Barcelona, which has caused these uh these protests against tourism, is the fact that in ten years the price of housing has risen 68 percent just imagine that as an interest rate or inflation that's that's Absurd. insane that's ridiculous by it's, any means that that basically guarantees anyone working blue collar jobs anyone working class at all has just been uh gentrified out of their own uh neighborhood and the mayor There's is trying to fight that and what he's proposing hasn't done yet is to stop renewing uh, licenses that per that permit landlords to rent out these accommodations to foreign visitors. And it would make homes, which were advertised on Airbnb, available to the locals. Now, there's some potential issues with uh, not renting out to foreigners that I could foresee there, but generally speaking, it's a good thing when you have something like 12 million tourists visiting. Yeah, and, it's oh. cool. Yeah, I think the key is in enforcing uh, long-term leases, like the length of the lease being a minimum of four or six months, as opposed to I'm leasing it out, you know, for two days at a time. Because a tourist will rent for, you know, two to seven days. A tenant will rent for six months. And even and other cities, historical cities like Venice, are imposing a, a fee for daily visitors. I mean... You, you go to Venice, and it's a ghost town at night because nobody lives in the city. It's just tourists. Yeah, just, yeah, this, you know, it, it's, you know, this is definitely an issue that we, uh you know, that we historically have sought to talk about because it's not necessarily archaeology or history, but it's about how we're interacting with those sites and as much as we love tourism, as much as we love the rising global interest in seeing the world and its history and all that, there come certain issues with having, you know, what was it? Uh, uh, 12 million tourists uh, in one city? <laughs> it, it, it poses a lot of interesting and very difficult discussions that we need to have moving forward. 
and I think it's being had in certain places, like uh, the uh, the caves in France, the Lasso, Lavro. Uh, uh, yeah, very, very important uh, cave paintings. But the cave itself was completely shut off to visitors because just having humans in that cave introduced a lot of moisture, a lot of humidity that was deteriorating the artwork that was tens of thousands of years old. Uh, Machu Picchu in South America is limiting the amount of visitors now because they the infrastructure around these sites and these sites themselves are so fragile in their condition. I mean, even Stonehenge, for example, you used to go and be able to walk between the stones. Now you have to stay, what is it, about 100 meters away in a larger circle? Um, I don't know if it's 100 meters. I think it was 30 meters uh, when I went there, but that was... I, at least five years ago yeah it's so it's, it's it, it's probably it probably got uh bigger during uh uh during the pandemic <laughs> but it, either way it just goes to show that some of these really historic really important sites can't handle the amount of visitors and even in north america the national park service after covid started having too many people come in that they've had to res do reserve time slots and limit the amount of people because infrastructure can't handle it these sites can't handle it these cities can't handle it these cities have no place to really populate that and i bet you the there's plenty of hotels i'm i'm sure it's not a lack of availability at this point i think it's more of a comfort or or yeah. feasibility thing yeah com i think i think it's i think it's comfort and affordability that is uh causing the issues here and also just increased volume uh the uh uh, what was it? Uh, uh, INE, which is Spain's uh, statistics office, has reported that this year, 2024, has seen uh, a 13 uh, percent increase in the number of tourists uh, coming to the country. So, like, the number of people is growing, and it's growing uh, significantly. And. Yeah. <laughs> To a degree, tourism can bring good money and it can bring, be a lifeline for a lot of communities, but there is a point in which it is too much, and I think that's really the point of this article, the point of these protests, is to discuss, like, where is that middle ground, where is that breaking point, what can be reasonably and sufficiently upheld and maintained without crumbling or causing these issues downstream. Yep, and I will say uh, to the people of Barcelona much as i understand where you're coming from please don't spray the tourists spray the landlords don't yes. ruin someone's vacation because someone else got greedy and was and started pricing you out of your home just remember the tourists aren't the problem the landlords are the problem remember go after the landlords and eat the rich and we'll end it right there thank you guys for watching yeah. we'll see you in the next one